It is without question that Matrix Reloaded was revelatory, yet enigmatic. It answered many questions, but created many new ones, bigger ones. Questions that, to this day, still remain unanswered. The scene that best exemplifies this is the meeting of Neo and the Architect. We've tasked ourselves with answering as many questions about the Architect's dialogue in this scene. However, said scene created a fundamental question that is still a highly predominant one in the Matrix franchise. What are those small TV screens? What do they symbolize? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. Before we begin today's video, we would like to announce our giveaway for the Matrix Movies Complete Collection on Blu-ray, which includes The Matrix, Matrix Reloaded, Matrix Revolutions, and The Animatrix. All you have to do to participate is subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video, and tell us in the comment section below which pill would you choose, the red or the blue, and why. The winner will be announced on September 15th. Good luck and enjoy today's video. To say that the scene inside the architect's room is the most confusing scene in the entire Matrix trilogy is understandable. Even if the architect's dialogue is interesting, it can be quite complex for anyone who has seen the film for the first time. And all those tiny TV screens with images of Neo doesn't make it any easier to understand. This is the kind of Kodak moment that many fans kept in their minds since their first viewing of the film. In an attempt to make sense of the images on the TVs, first we would have to try and tie them with what the architect is saying. The architect mentions that there have been several versions of the Matrix before Neo, in which the events of the movie unfolds. Six of them saw the appearance of the Integral Anomaly, also known as the One, Neo being the sixth anomaly. Because of this, we can assume that all those different Neos we saw in those tiny screens are previous versions of the One. This answer seems logical, but it creates a new set of questions. If these are indeed previous versions of Neo, why are there so many? And why are they all identical to the current one? This doubt comes from the fact that Neo is only the sixth one. It makes no sense for there to be so many versions of him, each one expressing a different emotion and reaction. This would imply that there have been numerous versions of Neo in past simulations, far beyond just five. So what is happening here? A possible solution to this problem could lie in something that the architect said, a little detail that we have already discussed in other videos. The architect prefers counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the next. That's how he determines each version of the matrix. However, there is a chance that other anomalies have existed, possibly an infinite number of them, and that could explain all the different neos we see on the screens. They are representations of the anomalies, but only six, including Neo, have been integral. There exists another explanation to our main inquiry, and this one could be the most appropriate. There is an important clue, not within the architect's room scene, but in the first Matrix movie, Thomas Anderson's interrogation scene. Somebody is watching Neo in the interrogation room through multiple little TV screens. Notice that they are identical to the screens inside the architect's room in Matrix Reloaded. So if the architect was focused only on Neo, why does he need to have so many screens turned on, showing the same singular angle? Wouldn't one screen suffice? It could be implied that in Matrix Reloaded, part of the reason for having so many screens turned on at once was to help the architect make his point to Neo about how insignificant Neo's struggles were, similar to when the architect shows him images of human tragedy and of Thomas Anderson's troubled youth. If you want to know more about Neo's childhood, check out one of our previous videos, link in the description below. So all those TV screens were there to dissolute Neo, but then what was their purpose in the interrogation scene in the first movie? Well, here comes a big one, the one thing that will help us solve this conundrum. We cannot see the architect as a person, he is a computer program, that is his true nature. Which means that all those TV screens probably aren't just monitoring devices that record everything but also modules that analyze and process all possibilities and predictions in the matrix code. In other words, they present every possible outcome, or at least all the permutations that the architect can think of. The architect's job was to create the matrix code, and for that, 
part of the program could always be analyzing and predicting what could happen next in order to decide which functions to implement in the future. It's like using a bot in a game of chess. It predicts every possible move that the opponent might make, it plans accordingly, and then it makes its move. This means that all those scenes that we saw in those tiny monitors were all possible outcomes. The results of the analysis of odds and possible events prior to any decision making or action. This makes sense because we cannot see things in the matrix from a literal point of view as they are representations of computer and algorithmic concepts. In this case, the monitors are part of the algorithm that helps the architect do his job. With this in mind, we can explain why there are so many images of Neo. The algorithm was predicting all the possible reactions Neo could have in response to the information that the architect would soon share, and possibly also based on the reactions made by those who came before him. After all, the architect had to balance the equation, and knowing all this in advance was very helpful. An example of this can clearly be seen in this sequence. When the architect tells Neo about the existence of the others, we see the Neos on the screens react to this information. They are alarmed. However, each expresses that emotion a little differently. Interesting. That was quicker than the others. Others? How many? Others? What an answer. Then they immediately seize and are once again focused on the architect. He then mentions the five previous integral anomalies, revealing that Neo is the sixth. Once again, the Neos on screen are all reacting and processing the information differently. And then the camera zooms in and focuses on one of the screens where a more composed and collected Neo rationalizes. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, in which case this is the sixth version. Five lines. There are only two possible explanations. There were five ones before. Either no one told me, or no one knows. The camera focused on that specific screen because it was the reaction that the current Neo chose. So now the architect centers himself around this possibility, using it as a base for further analysis. And this is why the TV screens changed. From that point on, the architect's predictions became more efficient and precise. Then in response to the architect saying that the anomalies are not unexpected and not beyond his control, the Neos react aggressively. The camera once again zooms in on one specific screen. The architect had once again predicted the appropriate reaction and will continue to work accordingly. As you are undoubtedly gathering, the anomaly is systemic, creating fluctuations in even the most simplistic equations. The reason why the other Neos keep getting more agitated could be explained when the architect says, Denial is the most predictable of all human responses. This could mean that at that very moment, he was running predictions based on how Neo could react if he were in denial of the information that is being revealed to him. After all, denial is the easiest response to identify. So it could have been the first thing that the architect was expecting in this infinite loop of logical structures. Neo's answers were often completely out of those odds and predictions. But as time passed, these predictions became sharper, more accurate. Like when the architect mentions the imminent destruction of Zion. You are here because Zion is about to be destroyed. It's every living inhabitant terminated, its entire existence eradicated. Bullshit. Bullshit. Denial is the most predictable of all human responses. The Neos on the screen begin to slowly become similar to the real one until they completely synchronized at the moment when Neo is forced to make a choice. By then, the architect was certain about Neo's decision. He was going to react based on love. But we already know what you are going to do, don't we? Already I can see the chain reaction, the chemical precursors that signal the onset of an emotion designed specifically to overwhelm logic and reason. An emotion that is already blinding you from the simple and obvious truth. She is going to die and there is nothing you can do to stop it. There is also a moment where we can hear the Neos on screen counting numbers after the architect spoke about Neos' predecessors. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, in which case this is the sixth version. Five, four, three, four, four. As I've mentioned earlier, 
These could be previous versions of the one that the architect uses in his algorithmic predictions. Now, this presents yet another question. If those NEOs were previous versions of the integral anomaly, how do they all look the same? For this, we have two possibilities. One, the architect used the same image on the screens because it was easier, less processing power spent. Or two, the others were actually identical to NEO, as stated in another theory. Both possibilities do have merit, because the architect once said that the previous five versions of NEO were designed with a profound disposition to be emotionally attached to mankind. Ergo, they would always choose to save Zion. Curiously, this emotional attachment manifested itself in Neo in a different way, as he fell in love with Trinity. Your five predecessors were, by design based on a similar predication, a contingent affirmation that was meant to create a profound attachment to the rest of your species, facilitating the function of the One. While the others experienced this in a very general way, your experience is far more specific vis-a-vis -vis love. Trinity. This is important because if the ones were designed in mass, it could imply that all the previous anomalies were in fact physically identical to Neo. After all, humans are not exactly born, they are grown by the machines. All of this could have serious implications for the Matrix 4. It could mean that everything that had happened and everything that Neo chose to do was already predicted by the machines. Although Neo decided to save Trinity, he still returned to the source and the Matrix was inevitably restarted, which is what the machines wanted from the start. In the Matrix 4, however, we may discover that everything that happened in Matrix Revolutions, including the truce between humans and machines, could have been another method of control used by the architect. But do you agree? What is your take on the meaning of the TV screens in the architect's room? Were they predictions of Neo's probable reactions? Were they all preordained by the machines? If you enjoy our content and are a fan of The Mandalorian and Star Wars, please subscribe to our other channel, Mandalorian Universe. There you will find daily news and theory videos about the hit show and of the Star Wars universe. For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.